Hey everybody. So this is a super interesting research paper. Uh, I almost passed over it uh, just because of the title, but uh, like I didn't know what it would be based off of the title. But after reading the research paper, this is like kind of insane. So it's called Broaden Your Scope, Efficient Multi-Turn Conversation Planning for LLMs Using Semantic Space. And if you don't like so the best way to summarize exactly what is going on within this research paper is, uh, so the model, you take a LLM model and, and the problem with like, so when we have LLM models and we train them on reasoning tasks, a lot of people have pointed out that they go like off the rails, right? Like they think like too long and they think like they'll get on a conversational thread and it'll just like go off. Right. And they'll like, sometimes they'll think for like five minutes, but like what's like two plus two. <laughs> and then they'll like, you know, go in this like tangent of thought for like five minutes on it. And then, um, it's kind of an interesting problem overall. Right. But so this paper is a, a new training method for that conversation planning within LLM models, but it, uh, does it in a way that is like very unique. Uh, you won't see this method anywhere else. And so what they do is they, uh, uh, every conversation uh, within the model is um, taken up within like, a, it, it's vectors and weights within the model, right? So if you ask the model, what is two plus two inside of the model that creates a, a shifting and a changing of activation functions and weights based off of the activation functions, right? Um, and then so that turns into to vectors and then the model outputs a vector result. And then so um, that vector result uh, is like, the end of uh, like for the model. Right. And then it gets translated into like human terms. But as far as like the AI process, it's that uh, vector creation is like the end end of the AI process. And then you get into we'll call it like the human construct. Right. So uh, input like what is two plus two? Uh, activation function gets activated, weights get adjusted, a vector response gets gets outputted, and then from there that vector response gets translated into the like, human terms. <laughs> but uh, let's take that out of the equation and then just focus on the vector response, right? Um, and then let's uh, also <laughs> take the the uh, actual adjusting of the weights uh, out, right? We'll just take the, the vector response because with the vector response alone, we can tell that there's an adjustment, right? So if um, weights are are point A in semantic space. And then so all of this, like these weights and, and the neural network, think of it as a like actual space, right? <laughs> like like an actual, like the, the um, uh, concepts are, are taking up space in, in a digital space, in a digital environment. And then so if I introduce, say, for example, uh, the concept of cat to the digital environment, it would go like in the very center, right? Uh, and then if I introduce the word dog to this digital environment, all of a sudden cat will shift and dog will be here right? because they're orthogonal to each other. So the, the space expands. And if I include um, like deer and rabbits and other animals, all of a sudden that space gets bigger and, and, and expands more, right? It expands vertically and horizontally. And then so that ex space expansion takes place and then a uh, vector gets plotted, right? Um, and then the, the vector space and the distance between the vector space gets broader and that's what we're measuring and uh, incorporating within all of this. So what this scope method does very uniquely is rather than take like the actual conversation. So like two plus two and then the human construct is, is you know, here's a bunch of text result. It's, uh, again, the point before the human construct is vectors. So uh, input is 2 plus 2, and then uh, the output is vector. And then so you train the model on that, just on the vector space alone, on that the vectors of conversations. So the model has imaginary conversations. That's step one, right? Step two is, is that you train the model on this using the Monte Carlo algorithms. So you're utilizing a... Uh, a Monte Carlo simulation to simulate these simulated conversations. It's like the like inception of simulated conversation, essentially, is like the bottom line of it, right? So it's like um, stimulate the conversation, take the vector from the simulated conversation, throw all of that into a simulation where that happens multiple times, and then train the model on that. And then that's essentially the end result of this research paper, right? <laughs> and then so uh, that's what they, they go fully in depth into 
uh, in their method here, and they, they provide like their, their full method, a breakdown of how it works, like uh, how this is better than um, actual like like um, traditional methods. If you're interested in like Monte Carlo tree search and how all that works, they give a good introduction there, a good introduction overall of their algorithm. It's very mathematics focused, right? Uh, but so like let's go ahead and and look at an actual like implementation of this and then for me I, I just wanted to to uh, couple this with like my recent like resonant models right so I take um, their research from scope here and then I'm going to play around with resonant conversation synthesizer I, I call RCS which is a semantic planning via resonant signature dynamics and so this notebook implements a novel architecture for simulating and optimizing conversations based on resonance field dynamics. It's 100% inspired by the scope of planning framework. So instead of simulating language directly, RCS operates in a high dimensional resonance signature vector, RSV space. So again, these are just all digital spaces. <laughs> and then like, like I said at the top, right? And then so all I'm doing in this instance is I'm just creating a different type of space. In this instance, it's a resonant space, but it's a resonant vector space, right? I'm still dealing with vectors. I'm just creating the vectors differently. Um, and then so this models conversation flow as a geometric transitions and harmonic field responses, as opposed to just pure, like, as opposed to uh, simulating conversational data. <laughs> And taking the vectors and the simulated, like the simulation of the simulation, I'm just simulating like geometric transitions and and and, and waves. And so like I'm, it's the same thing, but just in uh, like a different uh, terms, right? And then so uh, RCS represents. So let's go to the the model itself. And then so uh, essentially here you can see it's just uh, like I have the embedding model uh, transitions, and then this is all based off of rewards, right? And then so uh, all I'm doing is in this instance I'm just generating the uh, harmonic the harmonic vectors and then creating them right and my first step is is can I create these vectors and like can the model predict it uh, and then these are created vectors which are not uh, very good <laughs> overall there's a lot of negatives in these I wouldn't want to see a lot of negative numbers in my vectors uh, and then also to the predicted reward is extremely low but it's like above zero. <laughs> so it's it's doing something uh, and it works, but this model needs extreme tweaking is what the, the first result is. Okay, so let's let's do some extreme tweaking. Uh, and then so we add like a whole bunch of the model. I add a data set class, add an actual training function to it, right? So let's train it. Let's give it a four, uh, four pass, compute the loss, back propagation. Like, and so to me, like, uh, I've said this before, right? Like, it, it, like back propagation, I understand, is not a part of a, um, like, biological process like, or human biological process and, and back propagation in and of itself, right? People will, and, and neuroscientists, like, they'll hit me up all the time and they'll say that, like, back propagation does exist. It's just not, like, explicit within the brain, right? And then, but so to me, if I could take an explicit back propagation process, like I, I would take it, if I could turn it on and off, why not? Like, um, I, I think it would be useful to have it as opposed to not. And so I always include it in these things, just putting that out. And then uh, you have the evaluation function because I added the training harness. Um, and then we do just the main execution here. And then what we can see is that it trains, right? Uh, and then it's uh, the loss does go down uh, from 1.04 down to 0.94 after five epochs. Uh, and then the response is kind of bad. So the, it's this model's working, but it's still bad. <laughs> like, okay, I need more tweaking, right? So uh, let's go back to the drawing board. Let's like add essentially, you know, more things overall to the model. Let's adjust some of the math. It's just a majorly, significantly math adjustments, right? Uh, and then in this instance, we start off lower on the loss, so 0.97, and then we go down to 0.91. Uh, but then I'm still like, uh, uh, it, it's like okay, right? <laughs> like this is like um. Uh, and I'll show you on the next test. Okay, so so we're getting okay results. It's, it's actually doing something. Like these results are are, um, but 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 it shows that the model's working. Uh, and then so uh, let's you know like do it, give it like more more of a um, significant test, and and try to bump that up. And then so that's kind of what I do in this next one. And then this is. Uh, better, right? Uh, still, like not uh, not the the greatest. So, but the loss is going down significantly on this one. So we go from a one point oh eight down to a point five nine, and then our reward is going up significantly, right? Like the 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 model is starting like very like point like almost no reward, uh, and then we get to a point five one on the reward. So like there's a, a significant improvement in this model. Like it's like we're turning the dial in the right direction, and then so. 
go through, add some more stuff. Uh, and then in this instance, I train a um, Burt. I so I, like let's actually like take it and in, into a real world instance, right? So my my goal with this is is their framework. So we want to use an LLM model as the base within this. So I take my resonant harmonics framework. Uh, and then I create my resonant harmonics uh, vectorization embedding model, but then it's all going to be based off of this uh, pre-trained model that we're loading in here. And then in this instance, it's this all mini LM L6 V2, which is just a small model. Um, and then I give it a very small training set, right? So um, coherent pairs versus incoherent pairs. And I give it three of each. So how's the weather today? It's sunny and warm. What's your favorite food? I love pizza. How's your day going? Pretty good, thanks. And then incoherent pairs would be how's the weather today? Blue elephants fly high. What's your favorite food? Quantum physics is fun. And how's your day going? The moon is made of cheese. <laughs> and then we give it a question that is not in any of this training data specifically, right? Uh, and then I ask it, what time is it? And then it has two options. It's 3 p.m. or cats are dancing. And then, like, again, what time is it is not any part of <laughs> these three parts of the training data, right? Uh, and then so we give this to, to the model. We train it. Uh, our loss goes, like, okay <laughs> on the model. It doesn't, like, it, it's uh, across the board. But then, so what time is it? Um, it favors it's 3 p.m. over cats are dancing. And then, so its output is it's 3 p.m. So it gets the answer right, but like, it's like barely getting the answer right. <laughs> like, like, like by like 3%, it's getting the answer right. Uh, and then, so it's like, okay, uh, it's working though, right? Like, again, it's not any, like, what time is it is it doesn't mean anything to the model overall, right? And then so the fact that it, it, we can get it to attach meaning and get it to it's 3 p.m. is what this is doing, right? So, okay, cool. It's it's working. So let's essentially try to fix that. Like, and then so I give it like one last test. I go through, I optimize everything. So this is a like um a reinforcement learning, right? So by the end here, it's like it's full on reinforcement learning algorithm with like full on training mechanism epochs. Uh, if you could very easily just pointing it out, like swap out this LLM model here for a stronger model, right? Like if you want a stronger, more powerful model for an embedder, uh, just pick an LLM model and, and whatever one you have the capacity for and it would be stronger. Uh, and then you can put it in here. Um, and then I give it more coherent pairs versus an incoherent pairs, right? So I, I increase the training data uh, and then give it 10 pairs of each. And then I increase like the like training curriculum overall <laughs> and then like a few other tweaks. Uh, and then they end up being very significant, right? So because our loss starts at 1.86 uh, and then it goes down to 0.64 going. So going from higher to lower on the loss is good. And then we want the reward in the opposite direction. So the reward starts at minus 0.03. Very negative reward, which is very bad. Nice. And then it goes up and it ends at 0.71, like uh, so higher than our other rewards, right? Which ended at like 0.51. Um, so very significant there. And then we ask it the same question in the end what time is it? Uh, and then it says it's 3 p.m. And then in this instance, we get like a uh, like 21% difference between it's 3 p.m. and cats are dancing. Uh, and then so it very, like uh, in computer terms, very definitively knows that the answer is it's 3 p.m. Like it, 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 there's still a chance and a probability that it would output cats are, cats are dancing, but it's working, right? Like it's logically grasping or, or um, whatever, log whatever you want to attach to it that uh, if I give it the uh what time is it as the input it will know between it's 3 p.m and cats are dancing to pick it's 3 p.m and then so uh well exactly that like what exactly you want to label that as uh, as to me is it's, it's a human construct as to the label right um but that's what's occurring there um, and then so this is just a implementation of this framework so it, it's it's their their reinforcement framework brought in your scope efficient multi-turn conversation planning for lms using semantic space but i'm just implementing my uh, resonance and geometry based uh, models on top of it uh, and then kind of just so to like showcase both right and then like my long-term goal is <laughs> that this flat out gives me a way to turn my resonant models into nlp models uh, which i was missing um, and then so overall like that's like my main interest in this, right? Uh, I get to now have an NLP module for my um, my particular architecture, which I'm definitely going to use and apply to this in the future. Uh, and then I, and here's my experiments on it, right? And then so uh, I'll release this col uh, collab notebook. And if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.